Hey everyone. Hi Jenny. <laughs> I just waited till your talk came to the chair. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, it's quite nice doing a lunchtime seminar, not end of the day Friday seminar, I think. Um, maybe think of it as new model. Um, anyway, we've got Karl Eisenberg talking today. I, I don't think you need an introduction to anyone in this room, but since I'm here, I should give you one anyway. So Carl is currently our Associate Dean for Innovation in our faculty, in our faculty. Yeah, okay, cool. Why are you still called Deans? It should be Associate PVC now, shouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it sounds fancier. Uh, there's no dean to be an associate of. Uh, um, and lecturer in STEM pathways and manager of Inspired NT and general super enthusiastic science communicator, particularly if it's about turtles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I was hoping there'd be turtles today, but, you know, uh, Carla's, as you'll notice, Carla's animated enough most of the time, so it doesn't need to be about turtles to get you fired up. So, anyway. Okay, good. In that case, go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, and welcome everybody who's online or watching this afterwards as a recording. Um, what I'm going to do here today is give a little bit of overall view of Inspired NT. I have been working on this role for three years and a half as the manager. And actually, I'm leaving this role next week on Thursday. That's my last week. So I thought I should give this talk and also to kind of get clear on what we are and what uh, we offer so people can in the future see us as a resource. Uh, I'm still going to be a part of it. I'm just not the manager uh, very soon. But um, so we inspired NT. This is usually the cover that we use and our logo. And we also, we want to run Science Week in the Northern Territory. And inspired NT is one in, uh, it's part of the Austra Inspiring Australia Network, and we have one car in each state. And then that's, so we have a manager in New South Wales, Queensland, et cetera, et cetera. And they all run a little bit different according to the, the needs of the state or territory. Uh, and we run things here a little bit different than everybody else, uh, probably more, because yeah, I think our needs are quite different. So uh, just to give a little bit of an idea that is not working, maybe this. Uh, first, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land where we work, play, experiment and learn. We value the legacy of the first scientists and their continued connections to this country, in this case, the Larrakia people. And we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. And what, so as I said, what does Inspire NT do? We support uh, outreach engagement programs, projects, events. So what we are trying to do is to get science, uh, to get the general public to trust science more, to understand science more so they can make more informed decisions, to love science and have fun with it. it it's just sometimes we see in the media, we see in cases where that's not the case. So we're trying to, as much as we can, um, improve that uh, love for science in the general public. And, and for that, it's both, it's two ways. So if to get that, we also need to help scientists. And we're talking about STEM here. So science, technology, engineering, and thematics. So if we think it's pretty much what's in, within our college, plus the uh, College of Health. So, and we can even go to arts. We are talking about STEAM, which includes A, you know, for arts. So, um, in this case, we are helping scientists, engineers, and people working in technology to be better communicators, to find ways to explain what they're doing to the general public. And I think for this, for the purpose of this talk, that's, kind of, I'm going, that's the side of things I'm going to, to be. I'm going to present this as you, a scientist, an engineer, someone working in technology, what kind of projects we are doing it and how we, you could be part of it or how you could benefit from it. So who we are, so you have me and I go everywhere. That's what I love doing. I have a little bit of a background and I apologize, some people already have heard this, but um, why I'm so passionate. I am absolutely passionate about science because I see science as freedom, right? It's, it's the freedom to do what I wanted to do. When I was a kid, as a girl in a mining town inland Brazil, 
it was partially cultural, partially my family, but girls could not go camping. And I remember screaming at the top of my lungs in my grandmother's veranda, cursing my male, my male cousins as they walk out of the door to go camping, saying that one day I'll camp more than all of them together. And uh, just imagine this six-year-old girl um, doing that. And I, when I was 23 and getting flooded in the middle of the Kikori River in Papua New Guinea, I calculated that by then I had camped more than my whole cousin's family, both families together, all the 36 of them. So I am absolutely passionate about this because I can see sometimes it, it, uh, having that pathway for you, it's a way for you to do what you love and, and to be what you want to be. So um, what is the... So, so you have me that have been the manager up to now. Now, well, let's say like I'm going a step a level. So as the Associate Dean of Innovation of Faculty, I'm still going to oversee this project and a few others, but there is going to be a new manager and that's Sarah Sutcliffe. And then and she's there on the, on the left uh, with the green uh, shirt there on, on the bottom uh, left. And that's in during our dinner last week with Dr. Cow, that some of us uh, were there. And it was great to see him here in the territory. There was our um, Territory Science Forum Gala Dinner, the first event that we have. So if any of you would like to, to join the forum, please talk to Alan Anderson. He's uh, here today. Or if you are online, uh, please reach us and, and, and we'll see, send you the correct link. Um, so we also support, so for the forum, we are helping with the engagement activities. So you do have the policy and everything else. Spy Energy helps with the engagement um, outreach events that you possibly have. So that's one way we can, we can help. Um, that's me just talking. Sometimes people just ask me to give talks. There was the, uh, for Women's Day last year for the Muslim Association. They have it here. They asked me to come and say, I have to bring my baby. They said, bring the baby and she was well behaved. And I think I promote that because I want to see a, a space where women scientists can see that they can still have babies and, and, and keep working. So I think that it's very nice, the kind of environment that we try creating in Spire NT. Um, so, and then we have lots of volunteers. I think some of you have been volunteers uh, in space of, as a scientist or as a postgraduate student or undergrad student. Um, like we have some, some people have joined us in the road show here. I can see Will, you're here today. So this is the second group. I didn't, that, that was a slightly speckier photo, so I got the second group, but we had twice, we have gone all, uh, going down the Stuart Highway, going, uh, doing uh, workshops in schools. We're trying to go as remote as you can. We had lots of COVID restrictions. Now we're going to get better and better. Like the first time we only went to Tanner Creek, next time we went to Alice Springs, hopefully this year. It's going to be November, it's going to be a little bit steamy, but um, it's a challenge. And it has aircon. Most of the places have aircon. So it's about going to school. So our undergrads and postgrad students spend a week going down the Stuart Highway presenting uh, workshops to primary school students. I can guarantee you, spend a week doing workshops with primary school students. You absolutely guarantee your communication skills are going to improve. And particularly if you're an international student and still struggling, and we're talking about, we don't just get environment and science students, we get IT and engineering students, and they really benefit from that experience. And they, most of them have never left down, and the international students have never left down. Um, and we also have our postgrad students um, involved in our events. We're going to talk about a little bit more about each one of the kind of activities we do, but we get them involved as volunteers. And then it's good because I find that Science and arts, something very common sometimes that we don't necessarily um, know how to value ourselves outside our work. So if you go to a business person and say, can you give a talk for me? And they will say, yeah, $1,000. And then here people do a lot of volunteering. That's great. But I think that's a point that we should start funding our, uh, and uh, let's face it, postgrad students can do it for a little bit of money. So um, I have been one been there, done that. So you, of course you have to start as a volunteer because I can't just give you, okay, go and do this by yourself. You need to learn the role. But once you're actually there and knowing the role, you should become an officer and you're actually employed casually here by CDU or you actually have your own business where you invoice us. 
those two options here. And, and that's very important, but I think you should be paid if you're doing work for us when you know what you're doing and you're taking leadership on it. And of course, it is the case of Sarah. She started as a student here and eventually went up the ladder to now she's going to become the manager. And I think this is very important to think, to think through this cycle in the NT where people don't stay for very long. Let's face it, it's just the reality. It's not necessarily going to change. So if we know, and also the problem with Inspire NT, not just here, in every single state, it's an amazing network. So very quickly, you increase your network, you show you're working hard, then you're good at it. People will poach you for someone, someone else's job. So um, it sort of happened to me. I, I just never left CDU, but you know, you just go up or you go somewhere else. So we need to find someone. We're starting from the zero. On a program like this, where we rely on relationships and rely on being constant, to be there, going to the school every year, they knowing that you, go, you are reliable, it does causes a lot of disruption and it doesn't work. So that cycle is extremely important for us. And that's why we really want to keep it. And we want to, to have that happening on a long-term basis. Um, so yes, for example, this is Bite of Science. It's one of the events we have at Science Week at CDU. It's one of the easiest one for you to do if you want to promote your science. It's something like this, where you have a little booth or you have a little thing where people can come and you can show what you're doing. This is Elna's here. She was actually one of our awards for postgrads for the Science Week Awards. And it, this is one of the projects she did. She was uh, showing uh, how to distill it. Um, I think it was, I can't even remember, it was chemistry. Uh, it was, <laughs> sorry, it has been three years that one. It's such a beautiful photo. <laughs> Um, so Science Week, I think most of you will be at least familiar, have heard about it, but we run it and I think we are really proud because it has been always very Darwin centric. It has been always a lot of events in Darwin and then the communities, if the schools want to do something they would, but uh, we, it was really hard to provide support. So what we did, we really focused on spreading the love of our grants and our support to outside Darwin to it. And, and I think we're seeing a much better spread now. And I, I, this is not a competition, Carla, but I'm going to give you some numbers. Last year, we're talking about 114 events. My or might not look like a big number, but that's 6% of all Science Week events in Australia. Again, this sounds like great, but NT has 1% of the population of Australia. So we are actually doing really well. And when you see this spread, believe me, it looks really good. Uh, I want more though. I want much more and I need help for that. Um, so, and this year, we, again, we want to run something that will go everywhere. Um, so the things that we have usually have a remote project that we promote. This year is going to be about microscopes. We're going to send little microscopes to schools and we're going to ask them to take photos and there will be a competition around it um, to send the photos and the best ones, even an export later. We are still uh, organizing. So we have a launch event. It's going to be linked to the uh, um, Darwin Festival and um, um, museum of uh, the museum magnet um, event. And again, it's getting people that are usually involved in the science week to have a very nice night and say thank you. Um, and then we have the science, National Science Week Awards Night that I want everybody to pay attention here because you could potentially win an uh, award here and actually you get money out of it. And, and, and then that's when we celebrate our local STEM heroes. We have some, at least one person here in the room who won one of the awards. Um, and then, See, here in this example, last year, we did have a pre-launch and a launch because I was still wanting a good event here, but we really want our launch to be remote. So our launch was at Baronga Festival. I was like, oh no, Baronga's at the same time as Science Week. And I was like, oh yes, Baronga's at the same time as Science Week. And then we made the launch there. The school was with us. We had a few of our postgrad students helping there on that day. It was fantastic. And we also had the Seep of Science at Don's Bar. Science is not just for children. So we can actually have events. So it was about changing hit the Don's menu and then we renamed we branded the menu for two weeks for uh, according to the scientist research and then went really well and each researcher who was renamed after drink had a free drink that was really good these are the scientists that got um, more, more 
got recognized last year. And then we have vital signs. This is a big family day here, the CDU. We bring, you know, there will be laser tags, jumping castles and quest of corn and things like that. We bring the people um, uh, to, to, to take so what you want. You can apply for $200 dollars to buy materials in a little bit of your time and you come and you uh, have your own stall promoting your own science it needs to be hands-on if you just have pieces of paper nobody's going to come to talk to you because what you need is something for the children to be playing with while the parents are talking to you about your research so they need to be quiet having fun with what you have and then people will be able to talk to you about what you're doing and make it relatable uh, so um, if you have turtles for example as you do, uh, what I do, research turtles. Um, you, what I do is I actually bring a big bucket of sand and I put ping pong balls there and I get the kids to dig for turtle eggs. And then when they dig, you know, you, you, you break their hearts saying, yeah, it's not a turtle egg, it's a ping pong ball. Or first you actually smash it on the floor so they get really freaked out first <laughs> before I tell them that it's not, it's, it's not real. Um, so, and this is the awards night. Last year was in Crocosaur School. This year it's going to be at the um, Botanic Gardens. And we did like 10 categories, but the ones that might interest you, we have the Science Scientist Award. So the scientists that have been promoting science in the territory. We have the Postgrad Award, and we have the main one, which is STEM Hero of the Year Award. That it's like the overall the person has done the most for it. Like last year, we had a share one where Rebecca and Amy share one, um, the STEM Hero of the Year. So it's already on the fourth year. And that, that's kind of, and if we usually, if we have the Poppy Awards, that happens on the same night too. And it looks a lot of win people in is because one school took every single student to the awards night to receive the award. So, um, but you can see here some of the winners. Um, yeah, and it's actually you get $250 for yourself. You can do whatever you want with it. And you, you just, yeah, and, and, and it's a good thing for your CV to, to have an award there. And we do promote you too. We do, school activities can happen in many ways. It can be the school approach me and then I put a call out that I need someone to go to this school. They want something about soils. They want something about microscopes. They want something about water, about trees. And then you go out there and have a, uh, spend a day if you need. Again, if, it's, if you are actually completely tanking um, leadership on that, so you're going there by yourself and you're doing it all yourself, you get paid. If you're coming with me for the first time just to get a feeling and help, then it's still volunteering. But in most cases, we are happy to pay. Or if you're a scientist and you don't feel like you need that money, you just want to do something, but you need the materials, we are also help, happy to, to uh, pay, uh, pay for anything you need on that. No, it depends. Anything is a little bit, but you know, we can pay, pay for the consumables. Um, so for example, here, um, yeah, I, I had nothing to do. She, she got the money. She went there and did it because it was her, um, the, the school from her. I think one of her children was there. So she went there and did it. And, and I, here we went there. It was in Buranga. We went there ourselves. We have volunteers. They came with us. They helped. So you can travel too and you can have a little bit of a taste for the NT if that's something you want to learn a little bit. And we pay for all the accommodation, travel and um, and food and everything. We'll take care of you. And sometimes we bring them here. Sometimes, particularly when we reach middle school and high school, it's actually really valuable to bring the students to CDU so they can see what how CDU looks like and how it should be in university, interact with that environment. And in this case, I sometimes might send an email like, I need volunteers to feel, and it, it's not very long. It doesn't take a lot of time. We're talking about 40 minutes where you just do some hands-on things with these students. It never takes too long. So we, um, in this case here, I can't remember <laughs> what happened, but um, we, we have the students coming here and, and doing a whole day. But again, it's my responsibility to organize or the manager of the organize the whole day. You just need to be responsible for your, your slot and you need to know what, tell us what you need and you need to tell us where you want, we are, you want us to book the room. So we make everything as easy as possible for you because we know you're super busy, but we know we need your brain. We need you there because 
Um, the students are really keen. There's a lot of students interested in environment science and in science in general. Um, and then, for example, here again, there was the students coming here for RoboCup. That's more the engineering side, but we have other engineering students helping there. And of course, we want to promote the... Uh, Nicola, such a great photo of you. I love it. <laughs> um, and then we... Honestly, they, they say, and I, I say we'd like to, to, you know, promote the underrepresented groups. In environment science, that stage, not quite so much. We do get a lot of women, girls and women coming to do environment science, but um, not so much in the other areas. But to be honest, the girls here in NT are absolutely nailing it. Every time we do um, competition, the girls win. And then it's not, I'm not talking about science, I'm talking about engineering. I'm talking about these girls, they were from Elliot with the uh, solar car. And I asked them, um, and then we were doing a competition all across the NT, we were traveling everywhere with the solar cars to see who was going to win. And then these girls were like, uh, we, are going to, we are going to win. And I was like, are you? And I was like, yeah, we're going to win. We had the best car. And I was just, okay, show me. And the car just went vroom. And, I, and I, I don't, last time, I was so excited about car racing like that. Probably Aiton Senna was alive. And if you know who I'm talking about, you're old. <laughs> um, so um, we have, so, and then they, they won the solar car challenge. They won the IT code fair, Minecraft challenge, both runner up and, and but same here, runner up and uh, in first place, runner up, first place, all girls. So, it's really good to see. I think girls in the NT have a little bit more hands-on, particularly in, in as you get out of the city. And I, I think this is something we should explore more. But I, I'm so proud of them. And, I, and also we do things like we have the uh, women, and that's another thing people can get involved. Um, we have a day at the library um, that we celebrate science and, and engineering um, uh, STEM with women. And it could be the day that... Uh, International Day of Women's and Girls in Science, so it can be International Women's Day depending on our availability. And that happened last year. This year it didn't happen, but I'm planning something a little bit bigger next year where we have one day for schools and one day for community. Sorry, Carlos. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's all right. Oh, really? No, no, it's oh. Not <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Hope everybody's hearing me there. <laughs> oh, no, I can't move. Oh. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> okay. There you go. Uh, we also promote First Nations science and technology because um, it's a big part of the NT and not just absolutely, it's very important. And as we scientists should acknowledge that and work together with um, Western science should work together with First Nation science, but also because we want more First Nation kids going through the pathways to become scientists and engineers. We absolutely need them as scientists and engineers because what they are going to do, we can't do ourselves. The way they're going to walk and they're going to do things is going to be different. And it's going to be in many cases the solution for a lot of the challenge we have. So, um, and it's very important for us to promote the science and technology from uh, um, uh, from the territory for, uh, for First Nations. And then this is a case, we do promote the Dominion Arts and Cultural Festival. They have a lot of STEM, uh, First Nations STEM there. Uh, we sponsor them, we have a booth there. I think there's also cool because uh, Sean and Penny are also there in a different project and we always cool to see um, them there. But uh, we like to do more of that. And this year we had a bigger grant for them to us to work together. So if that's an area you are interested uh, and you, you want to have something uh, to work with in, the, in this festival that's usually in the uh, end of July. This is the 22, but it's kind of the same time of the year, maybe a week later this year. And we do, we would like to do more on that space where we can integrate science, Western science and First Nation science. Yeah. So we do a lot of community events. It can be because we find out that there's a really cool community events we want to go and then we contact them and say, can we have a booth? And they say, yes, pay this much. And then we do and we go. Or there is people who reach us and say, can you please come and do something in our event? For example, Barunga every year, we just sign in and then we go and have a booth there. Now we have a partnership with the school where we do something at the school first and then we go to the, um, so it's a workshop at the school and then we have a, um, 
a booth at the festival. And, and then sometimes, for example, there was a, the astronomy night every year in May we do in partnership with Casuarina Senior College. It happened um, last Friday. Yeah, so one week ago we had one. And every year we do it again. It's good. I think this constant thing makes people know that we are reliable. And then some, for example, Worley in Catherine said, oh, we had the, the community, um, uh, they, they work with health. Um, and they, they said, we, we have this play, moments that we can offer workshops. Can you come over? And it was very interesting because you don't think a lot about it. And it was like, oh, this is little thing. But it was like, no, let's do it. We went there. We did soon blowing the dark teddy bears, right? And brace co uh, Morse code bracelets. And during that session, a lot of these women said, oh, I didn't realize that um, science was so relaxing. <laughs> But it was interesting because I, I, in that moment, I prompted Kate, who was our officer then, to, it was like, Kate, come on, tell you about your experience with the um, desert, because I knew she had a story about it, with the desert field intensive that Jenny and Eric have run. Can you tell you about the moment that you thought that was very relaxed? And then she started talking about when she was measuring fish and how much fun she had doing that. And she shared that. And the ladies were like, oh, I can do that. I can be a scientist too. And then have breaking that, idea that I know I can't do it, it needs to be an Iceland to do it, you know, if I haven't gone from high school straight to university, that's done, I can't go anymore. It's very important, half of these ladies came here to do the pre-STEM course and now they're really keen on starting a degree. So um, this is the kind of activities that I think uh, sometimes we don't realize how important it is when you're doing, but it is. Um, and community events, this is the teddy bear picnic during uh, Darwin Festival. And then we have the Questacon, we help with the Questacon things, and then we have activities like, Nicola, you volunteer for that one. Again, we always look for volunteers for things like that. And it's just a one-off, and you just go interact with the public, and, and you can actually present something of your own research if you want. Um, so we do GovHack, where we sponsor and we work very close together with that project, um, IT Code Fair. Hawkins Hazer, which is, we did last year with ABC, the BK came here, recorded. You can still listen to our talks there. Uh, but sometimes it's just people reaching to us. It's a, it's a lot about networking. They reach to us and say, we need something this day. Can you help us? And please be patient with me because sometimes if I agree to you saying, can you do this tomorrow? It doesn't mean that sometimes it's because I'm not organized enough, but sometimes that's all I got. That's the whole time I got. And, and sometimes it's like ABC and you go like, well, I will try. Let's see who can do it. So we have BGPG uh, camp here that we help. Again, we don't organize it, but it's like, they come to us, we have this time slot. Can you find these people who to do this for me? Like for example, uh, Frank's there working with microscopes and ants for the BGPG. We have Alex there for the Geek Fest. Geek Fest is one that they love it so much. This year they're going to have a whole room and I will need your help because I need to fill that room with lots of cool science and scientists interacting with the public. And it's a very fun one that if you're a little bit of geek, you should go. And that's in Palmerston, so it's not that hard to go to. Um, and again, it's sometimes it's partnerships, the CSRO runs the Anti-Young Indigenous Women Stand Academy. They have a camp, they say, Carla, can we have this time slot? And then we got Stefania to do the, Buddy jumpy ducks. Have you heard of this buddy joke ducks? They are awesome. They all have names of the lectures from the engineering department. I think that's Frizo. <laughs> um, so, and then they just do some cool stuff that we have the capacity, we have the space, we have the people. We just, and again, each person had to then give one hour of their time to do this. Um, and then we do the labs, engineering, they have sports science, and they have a great day. And we got lots of good feedback. There was a few others. Um, I think Linda Luck was also involved in this one. And again, all the projects that reach us, that sometimes with their uh, own little programs, half a day programs, as Children's University, as INT, we had this robot that we still have them, that we use them. That was Children's University last year running here an event and and that's when we really need you to bend the laws of physics 
lest your threads pass and ever and ever happen at the same time. I didn't want to leave any of them behind. So we had um, me and some volunteers coming to threads pass. And I think Frank and a few others, Vanessa, maybe went to that one. Yeah, and Alex. Yeah, so they all went to Mararenka. And, um, and then you just spend the day interacting with the, the community and, and learning a little bit more there as much as they learn from you. Let's face it, it's fun. <laughs> and of course, you can go to the, the, the hot springs afterwards. Um, we had NASA last year, and we actually have it quite often. Every two or three years, they come here. The NT is an area where they do some of the occultation nights. So, and they're really keen on doing outreach events, and they usually reach to us. And it, they're very popular. This is, was my biggest success and failure at the same time. Uh, it was in Catherine. And then we decided to do an event at the Catherine campus. We catered for 150. And, was like, and that's why I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's going to be sausage curry for three weeks after that new eating. We had 350 people. People coming from 200 Ks to see that the NASA scientists said they never ever talked to so many people at once. Yeah. And they're coming from America. <laughs> <laughs> And then this was an awesome event because they, uh, but the problem was people couldn't hear them. There was so many people and I, my, my microphone was not expecting 300 people, but it was awesome. And they could look at the NASA microscopes or, or micros, um, telescopes and they are amazing. Even if there's clouds, you still see this. You look at the clouds and you look at the thing in the stars. And I don't know, it's just really amazing. And, and we had around 10 of the CDU students volunteer for that. And the awesome thing is everybody who volunteer will get on the paper. So sometimes you even get that extra that if you volunteer for something like that and they help NASA for a week, NASA puts you in a, in a, in a <laughs> as one of authors in a paper. So it's not too bad. <laughs> it's probably a lot of authors on that paper. <laughs> Um, and then they came out to schools. And that's the thing, people on the volunteers that went to this, they afterwards talked to schools about the experience and things like that. But that was actually NASA going themselves. I, we did a competition for which school would go, and then an Aloha won, and then that's them there. So, first, uh, festivals. Why do you go to festivals? So again, as an opportunity to network and create new partnerships. And and it's a very good opportunity for people to practice their science communication. And it, it's hard. It's not easy. Even the thing you think you nailed and you know a lot, it's not necessarily easy to explain. And sometimes you try 10, 20 times before you actually find the best way. And then once you get that, it gets easier and easier. And yeah, they put me next to the medieval <laughs> booth and I was theme a witch. That's why the photo is like, yeah, because my... The teddy bear was glowing. <laughs> uh, it was just, it, you have fun and you have fun in this festivals. It's really cool. But it, again, it's a good moment. You never know, it's Darwin, it's NT. The people who are passing through that, it's probably people are going to give you a job next week. And I'm, it's not that hard to you know, be talking to someone in an event like that and next week realize that you know, you're applying for a job that the person is the boss and it's in your job interview. And it might actually be impressed by you doing this. You never know, it's a small place. And yeah, and it's a good opportunity for you also as a volunteer to meet other people. So this was the roadshow from last year. Like I said, this year we're going to make it more fun and be in November. <laughs> but what do we do? We create groups and the groups, we give the funds and then you create your own workshop, one hour workshop for primary school kids. That's all we tell you. And you create this workshop. And then if you, the undergrads are doing it, they need to do reports and things like that. But the uh, postgraduate students go, um, if you have, it's more like if you, it, it's your holidays, okay? This is not, and you have to talk to your supervisor before you go to something like this because it does take 10 days. But um, you go there to the trip, you go from down in Charlotte Springs, a good opportunity. If you haven't done that trip before as an environment scientist, it's absolutely awesome seeing the environment going from uh, monsoon to Savannah to desert. It's a trip worth doing. Um, we pay for everything. We pay for food, accommodation uh, while you're there. We can't pay for your time because that would be very expensive, but we do accept volunteers. Most of them will be undergrad students and you will be supervising a group. So it's something that's good because you also improve your, your, uh, your skills in supervising and leadership. 
So like, there's other places we went last year. This year, we're hoping to do a little bit of a detour and go to Baranga um, and to, to Maniana Look in Beswick. So it will be, be, hopefully will be a little bit more remote. Um, but again, this is just wishful thinking. Um, I haven't contacted schools yet. And, and we end up in Alice Springs to, to meet the school there, which is the reason we are going in November, okay? It's not because I want people to suffer. It's because the school there will be meeting term four. These the students are coming to Alice. So we can actually meet the students that usually work in stations and community. They will be coming to, to, to interact there. And we have really good, um, that you want to do something, one, a good one, if you want to start, is do a little workshop in a library. So that's very easy to do. You can contact us, we'll contact the libraries. The Tamin Me Library is dying for workshops. If they have just said they're really keen on it, but honestly, the Darwin Library will really, really be keen. And they pay, sometimes I don't need to pay, they will pay you to do these workshops. And again, I'm not asking for anything too complicated. And now a workshop on something related to your research um, can be something fun. So this is some of the photos of the last year and how we promoted. We got a really good, uh, pretty much 100% of the schools that I reached said yes. So it's really good to see that they are really keen and they're happy with our work. Um, this is some more photos of the roadshow. We have the Questacon uh, materials, but there are also uh, other things like VR, and it's some of the students. So um, one of the students have about erosion, and that was really interesting. Her workshop was about erosion and putting little planting little trees and see what happened. Um, Mick was one of our previous students. He did one that he learns here as an undergrad to do a bolus to see the rebel for the soil. He did that with two the kids, and the kids absolutely love it to get all dirty and and and, and playing with mud. That's, that's great, and then they learn a little bit from that. But it is easy. like at this age, sometimes just having a positive experience is all they need. It's just that connection, just to realize that that person can be you in the future. Uh, and sometimes it's just you are in the right place at the right time. And so think about that when you are, that's me. I was the wedding, Catherine, and there was the Pride Fest. So let's do the science of the rainbow. Oh, you know, I was already doing 300, AMV 316. Let's, there was a market going on in, in um, Marine on that day, let's go to the market. So it's very, it can be opportunistic too. And if you're already doing research and you know you're going to a place that you think that while you're doing the community that will benefit to learn more about it and you just need the funds to get the materials on extra few things, talk to us, we can give you that. It's the same with conferences. And I think that's something that's working really well now. We have at least three conferences this year that we are going to borrow the guest speakers from that conference and do a community event. Like for example, uh, with Alan, we're going to hopefully do one with fire and we're having fire jugglers and things like that. So it's, um, um, it's a, we have a, it's, it can be on what is, think about what you want and how we can help and we'll find a way that how that can work for us. So why should I do this? First, you're promoting your research. More people will hear about it than ever, and people will be positive about it. People think your, your research is important. The politicians will think your research is important. And that's going to be a very nice feedback loop on funding. Um, it's a great opportunity for networking. We have lots of events that um, high level people from the government and scientists go to. Once you start volunteering for us, you'll be invited to this networking event. There is opportunities for you for, we are going to have some opportunities for you to um, just uh, for, for improve communication skills, workshops and things like that. So it, it's an area that um, you can work with if you test it what you like. So you can improve your communication skills in a very friendly environment. We are not going to put you in front of a hostile audience. It's usually an audience that's there to learn and they will uh, give you support and positive feedback. It's not going to be, we're not going to get you in a situation that you're going to be, it, it's small children. Sometimes they can be a little funny, but um, but they are in overall very nice. Um, <laughs> and well-being. I think, I can I speak for everybody here who has been part of this before, that after that event that you have done, the workshop you have done, 
you might have felt exhausted, but you felt better. And I have seen this over and over again. It's that very important, particularly for postgraduate students, uh, PhD students, that um, mental health can, can be such an issue that doing something like that and not being just absolutely focused on your research, but I still want your research and still doing something about your research, but not your research itself can be really good for their mental health. And it will, and I think everybody should do a little bit of that because you do feel better. The kids will come to you and say, your research is awesome. And then like, you're just every day, you know, among peers that I know everybody's very intelligent and you end up getting a little bit of imposter syndrome. So getting those kids telling you that you're awesome does help. And then, you know, it just reminds you that, you know, you are, you're doing is cool and it's important. I think this is really good. Um, so I really recommend that. And again, don't, I'm not asking for supervisors in the room or are listening to me. I'm not asking for you to let your student go absolutely out of rail, you know, and spend a year doing engagement instead of doing the PhD because it can be used also as a procrastination tool. Um, but like allowing them to do a few hours here and there, it's going to be good for them and they're going to actually be more productive. I don't know about you, but I find the solutions for my, my biggest problems on research when I'm not doing research. And things like that actually help because it's kind of related, but not some allows your brain to do that connection that you needed. Um, and again, it's opportunity like all of us, most of us here are in scholarships, grants given by the government, which is eventually it's taxpayers money. And we're giving back to the community what we are getting. And I think this is very important. Um, and also uh, let's inspire a new generation of local scientists. Um, I, I, I will give you one more like, Again, some people did the exercise last week, but let's go back memory lane. Think about why you became a scientist. When was that moment that you were like, whoa, that's what I want to do for my whole life. There is, there is usually parents, supportive parents is really important. There is uh, good teachers. My year 11 biology teacher, Naewe, uh, he was awesome. And I, I gave him an invite for my graduation. Uh, and, I, and I wrote that, it's your fault. <laughs> um, but more than ever, it's that moment, you know, that skip heartbeat moment, that moment that was so special when you realize that someone told you or you, you, you were doing something, I was like, oh, I can do this for the rest of my life. So I remember that. I was 17 years old. I was volunteering for the, for the uh, uh, hepatological collection, um, you know, just feeling ethanol in the in the in the in, the, uh, in buckets and things like that and 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 the, and the um professor from that unit came to me and said carla you have been volunteer here and, and i think now you should think about doing something related to reptiles or amphibians what do you think about that and i was like yeah no that sounds pretty cool and they're like wait what about frogs and i was like yeah frogs are cool uh, what about um lizards yeah no lizards are fine what about snakes? No, oh, thank you. Um, what about turtles? Suddenly the clouds in the sky open, the angels start singing. And I was like, turtles? <laughs> I can work with turtles for the rest of my life? And I don't know why, but that was the moment that I realized that those things that people, for me, environment science and working with turtles is something that people did on TV. It wasn't something that I could do. And then at that moment, I was like, I can do, I can work with turtles for the rest of my life. And I don't even need to marry Dave Rattenborough for that. Was it still plan A to marry him? But I had a plan B. Um, and so and I was just like, and I think, can I leave that kind of feeling that like, be that person, be the person that tells, if you get one extra, you kind of replace, you're like, you're an ecologist, how many you need to, to convince to be to replace yourself eventually. <laughs> In the, so, but be the person who will tell the young, the, 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 person, the, the, the teenager, the child, that they can work with something really cool for the rest of their lives. They don't need more seniors and they don't need more people saying, oh, you need just to make money. They have that a lot. They get that. They, and, to come to university, eventually you will find what you're good at. It doesn't need to be the thing that you came in. Half of the people come to university to study with dolphins or be, or be astronauts. 
not many of them will do that. And like I discovered that like I wasn't, it wasn't for me. Dolphins wasn't for me, turtles was. Um, but I, they need to hear that. They need to hear that's okay to follow your passions. And it's okay to be a nerd, to be someone who wants to be a scientist. And you don't need to be the nerd that you think like Einstein. Because I heard that a lot. The girls come to me and it's like, oh, science is cool, but I'm not an Einstein. I was like, I, mean, I think I am. Uh, and, and they go and I go, oh, yeah, maybe I can be. <laughs> uh, so you need that. Let's, let's inspire this new generation. They need to hear that. It, it, sometimes we take that for granted. We think that they are hearing that. They're not. We need to let them know that if they're going to be, they're going to be scientists and they're going to be awesome at that and there's jobs waiting for them because the industry is desperate for more people, especially in the NT. So come for, with, to work with us, volunteer. If you are a scientist already, tell us well, how we can help. Is that an event we can help? Is that something you always wanted to do but didn't quite? Like we have been working with Jenny and Erica now in a project um, that uh, they are doing together with um, water and, and we are going to help with the, the communication with the schools. We can be that link. Anything that's the part, what is this, think about what's stopping you from doing science engagement. Because whatever's stopping you is, is that part we can help because you have the knowledge. So volunteer at work. If you are, some of you are already working with me, I we have at the moment, uh, like in three weeks, we're going to have three officers being paid one day a week. And we're going to have the manager and have me. And we have always need for volunteers. There is an event for now, now during season start, we have an event almost every weekend. I'm in Catherine today, Fred's pass next week. And then we have Baranga. I know Baranga is absolutely awesome. If you want to come and we pay for your, it's if you, a lot of people want to go there, you know, and you get everything for free then. Um, so we we'll join our science week committee. Uh, we have a, and we meet once a uh, month and you can help us there helping with the grants. Uh, so funds, what we have, that's part that left for less because you might be interested. We have National Science Week community grants. These are grants up to 3,000 when it's remote and 1,500 it's in Darwin. Remote is anything that's not Darwin, um, including Alice Springs. It's also considered remote. So this grant is already finished. But if you still want to do something science week, there is still Bite of Science, which is that community friendly event that you can have a stall and you can have some funding for consumables, reach us for volunteering to opportunities. Uh, we inspire, inspire and target science communication, communication grants is for science outreach. It's going to open next week. So that's a good time. If you think about an event you can join, what activity you want to do uh, or anything on that space, or if you want to help in one of the visits to, to this to, to when the schools come here let me know um, and we have the national science week nt awards it's going to open for nominations in a month and if you have been helping us for the last few year or so last year because it counts for the year nominate yourself don't be shy sometimes people think they can't nominate themselves they can that you can absolutely can because you know you're awesome um, these are, and also to keep an eye on if you are a Facebook person, we have a join us on Facebook. So you see when these grants are coming, it's the easiest way to do it. If you are in LinkedIn, follow our LinkedIn. Uh, we do have a website, we have uh, email and that's my personal email, I don't want to my CDU email, that you can reach me at any time if you have any questions. Um, at the moment, like I said, I'm migrating to just be overseeing different projects and so in my, my area now, it's, it's going to be more about the STEM pathways. So how we can get more people interested in doing STEM, both uh, TAFE level and undergrad level and postgrad level, not just people leaving high school, but people who always dream to be a scientist, but never realize they can be one. We have lots of them. Um, I think more, not, not, nowhere more than CDU, we have a lot of mature students and we know that they are around. So I think that's the end of my talk. And I think I might have five minutes. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm just going to stop sharing. Oh, I'll leave this here for now, because it has the contact. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's heaps. Okay. 
Uh, this could be open to all, including CDU graduates already, isn't it? Yes, anybody can, actually on anybody, if you just love science, you can apply for grants. As long as you have an ABN, you can apply for our grants. Uh, CDU students, if you're undergrad, um, volunteers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll take them anytime. Write to the Inspired and Cheese uh, email and we will put in, if you are here on the room, you can sign on a piece of paper there. But if you are online, just write an email to Inspired and Cheese, CC me to it and say you want to volunteer and we are going to let you know when the next volunteer opportunities. If you are want to volunteer, one thing that's extremely important is apply today for the Okra card. And that, but because you're going to volunteer for us, the good news is instead of paying $70, $70 you pay seven. You just need to get, uh, send us the form for us to sign for you. So you download the form on the website when you're doing the Ocra card before, and then you send it to us, we'll sign it. And then you will be able to apply for the Ocra card. You only pay $7. Um, Anybody can apply for volunteer, but some opportunities are for um, Yeah, anybody can apply, but depending, there is events that any, and I, we have people who really love science. Like we have science teachers, people who just want to share their love of science and they have an ABN and they apply for grants. Karen. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> Oh, and then Sarah Sudcliffe, like I said, is the manager. She's not here today because she's still finishing her previous job, but she's there. And Sarah Sudcliffe at cdu.adu.au. She's a, what's happening? If you, if you email me, I'm going to forward to her anyway. So I think that's it. And I'm going to take the questions from the room. Uh, here you go. I can pass this one around. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Carla. Hey, just in response to Karen's question, maybe cloning Dr. Carla would be a really good community science outreach thing. We could do it Barunga or something, get the kids. No, you really can't do it. Yeah. Carla, your, your work's really impressive and inspiring. And um, well, as well, we're working on something for this. Well, firstly, let me say that the NASA thing, the tick from the scientists shows that this isn't just great in NT or Australia, this is world-class work that you're doing. And for that reason, we're working on this conference together and outreach with the, this international conferences coming to Darwin. The organizer inspired, I'm on the organizing committee and I'm just starting to think, you know, why don't we do this at every one of these conferences all around the world? And what I'm wondering is, you said to us at morning tea that there's one of you in each state. So that means it's Commonwealth funding, I guess, that that's done this and I'm wondering if there would be funding to somehow export these efforts so you could somehow be guiding the next World Aquaculture Society Conference which I don't know where it's going to be but somewhere else in the world. Yeah so I think um uh, oh yeah so that's a part of I forgot to mention thank you for reminding me uh this is funded by Commonwealth and NTG and also a CDU so what happens is Commonwealth gives the a certain amount of funding and then each state and territory depending on how uh, supportive they are, they put different amount of monies. We are lucky we have an extremely supportive uh, NTG that has always been there for us and always supporting us. And we can see how massive difference does that when you compare when, it, when there is not that support in place, that makes the whole difference. So they need, need to thank our, uh, our uh, NTG for, for the support that they're doing and also Commonwealth and remember and also that we are guided by Questacon so they are the ones that we uh, interact with in our um, Inspire and Australia networking meetings so yes there is one in each state and territory so you can pretty much we are the only ones that are in the past tense we're inspired because we already know it uh, everybody <laughs> that, that I did had nothing to do with the naming um, but um, everybody else is inspiring then they're the name of their state so it's inspiring Queensland inspiring Western Australia, inspiring Victoria. So if you want to know more about this state, just Google it and you find their website and there, there's grants and support there. Very different. We are very hands-on here. Uh, most states, they, they just kind of work on the overarching giving grants and things like that. What we identify here is that the NT needed that extra support on capacity building, because if you just put grants, you're just going to get the same every year and they're not necessarily kind of, they're good, 
but we need we needed more so we decided to start taking the uh, in our own hands to, to be able to deliver this to these other places and also give that constant because then it becomes something that they, there's on the one name one banner um, but um, answer to your question it's this is like I'm just not spying to you this is kind of a personal uh, dream is that I, we, I hope that one day we can have a science engagement center at CDU with a mini QuestaCon interactive space and I make a space where schools can go and book workshops and things like that. And also um, uh, um, uh, a STEM mobile that we can take it to places. And that will all run in a slightly different structure than Spine NT. Uh, but this is kind of my long-term dream is to have that because that allows us also to start exporting. Because um, I see, for example, places that have similar like in WA that they have one like that or even Questacon, they actually make money exporting the exhibitions to other places and we are so close to Southeast Asia it wouldn't be hard if we actually have a really cool exhibition to just pack them up and, and export it and people you know can pay to, to have the exhibitions or you know depending if it could be just you know um, relationship building it depends yeah so the answer would be to have a mini Questacon Thing. not definitely not Questacon because Questacon is absolutely amazing and fantastic and it can't be reproduced but we could definitely do our little thing here that could go up far away I think Can I ask a question um I was thinking about you know there are opportunities for funding schemes for things like mobile labs that could be taken out to re you know we always go to cool places and do great field work but you know, I do lots of genetics work that involves bringing samples back here and analysing them. But, you know, there's equipment you can get these days to go and do DNA sequencing out in the field and, you know, link to the cloud and match them up and what are you discovering as a new species or not? And there's probably other disciplines of science as well. But, you know, it had, there's not always a, huge, a great economy of scale for doing that, but as an outreach and a training kind of thing, it would be really cool. So it might be nice. To, and we've got a really nice off-road research trailer down near the real boat shed. You know, it'd be nice to think about, could we invest in a few things that could we could take out with remote field trips and you can do a little bit more of a show and tell other than, hey, we're just collecting things and taking them back to the lab. We'll come back and tell you next year. Yeah, you know, there could be some mapping yeah, of things. That would be yeah. awesome. And then yeah. we were talking about schools here, high schools here. You end up getting 10, 12 students anyway. It, there's more classes. So you, you know, if you say, look, I'm going somewhere, you know, Litchfield or something, you can get it to Minmin College, uh, E11, to come and have a look at that at the same time we're doing something and explain. And they organize themselves and we can get funding for that, for that to happen and make the logistics happen too. This year I'm hoping, I'm not sure if it will happen, but we are hoping to take them to our field intensive in North Australia field intensive per day, where our undergrad students will teach them how to do transect. So there is opportunities for that thing. Think about that too. Can you have a day that your students become the lectures? That would be really good for them to learn too, because not, you never learn more than when you're teaching, as we all know. So um, again, you're doing some research and it might be a matter of you need two volunteers or three volunteers. We can put in our, the, the, um, we, again, it, it can be complicated if there is no parents with them, but sometimes the parents want to come and that's actually a good interaction too. It's like parent and child, like parent and kids up to certain age, we advertise. I'm almost sure you're going to get two parents wanting to get their teenager out of their computer for a few hours. Yeah. Or follow on what you're saying there. Um, another one that could be a follow on there, Sam, from what you're saying is, I mean, if you're going out and doing work on country and you have either obligations or you've just always wanted to go out and share what you've, you're finding rather than just sending a report to them, going to Carla and maybe organizing a community event to go and talk about what you found in your research that Inspired NT could probably help facilitate going out and have the schools come in, community come in and actually talk about what you found doing research on their land. I think those kind of things we could do in real a lot better than what we probably do normally. We just yeah. send a report that most people don't understand or wouldn't read anyway. And one thing that I didn't mention, but it's actually extremely important is that as you can use a seed funding. So, you know, when you're applying for a grant and you come to me and say, Carla, 
I can't give you a lot of money. I'm talking like top at the moment for thousand dollars, but you have that on your grant application that someone else is already going to give you four thousand dollars for science communication. I can guarantee you, your application is going to look much better because people love the fact that you are giving things to the community and things like that. On there's very few grants that will not see that in a very positive way. So I think it's an opportunity to, if you're planning to apply for a grant, to say that you already have. Uh, and I can we, we can write you a letter, Sarah, and I can write you a letter saying that if you get this funding, you get four thousand dollars from us to do yeah, this and X and Y. Yeah. 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 And it, yeah, and then we'll so you have that letter of support already that that can help you too. So that's something that and in, in this um, environment can be quite useful. Yeah. That might be. Thank you very much, Carla. That was fantastic. Thank you. And, and thank you and, for everybody. And Carla, Carla has forms down the front if anyone wants to sign them on the way out or email her if you're online. Yes, the email, uh, contact me, call me. I'm fine, easy to find at, at the website. Should I finish? Yeah. Oh, you do it. You're boss.